The Gadget Guy, Dave Matthews, is here once again. He's going to tell us about high-speed wireless internet. It seems like you bring more and more stuff each week. What, I like, I like this? to uh, surround myself with plastic devices. Yeah. This is a technology called 802.11G. Yeah. And in the past, we've talked about a very similar technology called 802.11B. Right, I recall that. That, yes. that This basically operates at 2.4 gigahertz. That's what the little 2.4 is there, which is a wireless frequency to allow you to put cards inside your notebooks and inside your maybe a USB slot and access or share a broadband device. Like if you have a DSL connection, why just let it connect to just one computer, yeah. right? You want to share this across all the machines in your house. My brother did this recently, loves it. It, it is a great it. technology. What's even the best thing about this 802.11 technology is public spaces are using it as well. So you can go to the airport, you can turn on your notebook, and if you've got this card that I'm showing in your notebook, it'll tie into that network. The problem is it only runs at 11 megabits per second. So it's relatively slow considering most businesses run at 100 megabits per second. Yeah. So what we're seeing today is 802.11G, and this is a technology that Apple really introduced first called Extreme Airport. And Apple, it seems like they're always the ones that are uh, introducing this stuff the fastest before anybody else. But the G technology means that it runs at 2.4 gigahertz and allows up to 54 megabits of speed over a wireless link. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. It, it's half of what half a wired network does. Now, what I especially like about the G is it's downward compatible with the lower speed 11 megabit. So if you think about all the Starbucks, the airports, your friends, your office, all of these different locations that have this 802.11 network in place, you can still take your new high speed card and it'll automatically talk at the lower speed. Now, to add even more difficulty and confusion to this, there's another standard called 802.11a. And 802.11a runs at the same speed, 54 megabits, which is you know, adding to the confusion, but it runs at a frequency of 5.8 gigahertz. And 5.8 is this new frequency that everybody's clamoring to. If you look in the paper, you'll see cordless phones that run at this frequency. Yeah. And it offers no benefits, no advantages whatsoever. I would stick with, if you already have an 802.11b network at your house, your internet connection is only one megabit. So trying to get faster internet with this technology won't make sense. So what are the advantages to well, having this? If, if you have a network at home where you share music, you share files, you like to, to maybe share printers or things that, if you're sending color pictures to a, a high resolution color printer, you're going to want to upgrade to this network because it's going to make your printing go twice, three times faster. Another advantage of this is because you're at the 2.4 gigahertz, you've got a larger range. Some of these, the 802.11a technology, the yeah, higher the frequency, the, the, lo the harder it is to get through walls and stuff. Yeah. And now, to make it even more confusing, we've got the cordless phones. The new ones use 5.8 gigahertz. This one is a 2 gigahertz phone. This one's by Uniden. What I'm going to do some thorough tests with is to see how this phone interoperates with the wireless access point and make sure that they can communicate on the same band. Now, one thing to look out for, if you buy the 5.8 gigahertz phones from Uniden, you are at a true 5.8. So there's no worry about the phone inter interfering or interfacing with the wireless access point. If you buy an AT&T or a VTEC 5.8 phone, yeah. they actually communicate from the handset back to the base at the lower 2.4 gigahertz speed. So what this means is <laughs> all this terrible confusion. This means your cordless, I'm experiencing phone, that right now. your cordless phone could interfere with your base station. So what I'm saying is if you have a wireless access point at home, try and get a 900 megahertz phone or a spread spectrum 2.4 gigahertz phone for the least amount of difficulty. Do you ever uh, find things that you don't understand? Because this makes me crazy. Well, you know, this you makes me, it, it makes me very upset that AT&T and VTEC both are advertising phones that are 5.8 gigahertz when in actuality they're a hybrid. They communicate from the base station down at 5.8 but from the handset back up at 2.4. So if you think you're going to get rid of this confusion, you're yeah. not. It's, it's uh, false advertising, so shame on them. You talked about sharing this in the home and then the speeds at which it does. Is it, I mean, is it for, let's say for a home business, which a lot of people mm -hmm. do these days, it transfers information at a rate where it, it does make it worth it to have? It does. If, like I said, but you have to be sending multimedia or video. Yeah. If you're just sending documents, which might be a few hundred kilobytes, it doesn't make sense to go with the G standard. Another thing to note is G has not been fully ratified yet. The, the International Standards yeah. Union has not said that this is the official standard yet. But fortunately, they're flash upgradable, so if you do want to make the jump today, you can download new software into it, and then that'll make it to standard. Good stuff. Okay, what's the website again? This uh, We're going to have to go to techtalkback.com or my Dave, name. DaveMatthews.com, right. <laughs> one of the best bands in the business.